Justin Thomas here for the one-timers. We only got eight teams left now in the World Cup. Uh, let's talk about these quarterfinal matches. Start with the first one, Brazil, the hosts, squeaking by Chile. It took a very valiant effort by Julio Cesar and the players that took the penalties in order to hold off Chile. But Brazil into the quarterfinals. They're taking on Colombia, so another South American opponent. Uh, probably, in my opinion, the team that has looked the best so far throughout this tournament and hasn't really had any flaws. Uh, I think this is going to be a really good matchup here between these two teams. Uh, Brazil has a lot of talent, a lot of stars, but they just, I feel, haven't quite gotten to that point where they really need to be... Uh, where they haven't really stepped up. I mean, they've had some mistakes. They they could have really have taken possession of the game early against Chile, but they made the mistake and allowed uh, Alexi Sanchez to, to score and keep it 1-1, and they just seemed out of the rhythm uh, for the entire second half. Um, and, uh, you know, there was an opportunity for Chile to possibly steal the win late um, where the, the, the substitutes uh, shot hit off the crossbar, but... Brazil, to me, uh, they still just have looked kind of shaky. They haven't looked as solid as I thought we would see this team play. Um, the good news is, though, uh, some guys stepped up big from the penalty spot. I mean, there's a lot of talk with Julio Cesar, you know, being dropped from, from QPR, now playing at Toronto FC in the MLS. But he made a, a couple big-time saves against Chile. Uh, and the penalty shootout and able, and able to help his team uh, really get the win in the end. Neymar made his from the spot. David Luiz made his from the spot. Um, a lot of guys stepped up and, and really put it home. Um, as, as the penalty shootout goes, I feel like that it w just wasn't it wasn't that uh, really that solid in all honesty. It felt like both teams didn't really take good penalties, but in the end, Brazil gets the job done. But Colombia, on the other hand, has looked about as fantastic as a team has, I think, in the entire World Cup. James Rodriguez, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've just been loving this kid, watching him play. Had a fantastic goal uh, to open it up against Uruguay, and then he had another one um, laid on to, to win it 2-0. This team, really star-studded talent that's really coming into its own in this tournament. They're playing without their star player. A lot of people thought that would really hurt them, but other guys have stepped up big. And I think that they're really going to give Brazil a run for their money here in this quarterfinal matchup. Um, this, I think, is probably the most threatening game uh, that Brazil really has right now up to this point just because I think that uh, this Colombia team is on a mission and can really uh, do some damage if Brazil doesn't play their best. Uh, moving on to another quarterfinal, the, the winner of Brazil and Colombia will get the winner of this matchup. Two European foes, uh, France, who's looked really good um, throughout the tournament as well, taking on Germany, one of the favorites to win the tournament. Um, a lot of folks saying that if anyone outside of, uh, if anyone in Europe really, I should say, since no European team has ever won off South America, so if anyone in Europe going to do it, probably would be Germany. I think this is a fantastic matchup. I'm kind of bummed it's a quarterfinal matchup. I think both these teams do deserve to be in the really like a semifinal or, or the World Cup championship. Uh, France, obviously, a complete 180 from their debacle in 2010. Now they're back playing uh, great football. This is a team that I really like uh, with Benzema and, and Giroud, Pogba, and then just a lot of sound guys that, you know, get the job done for that French back line. Hugo Lloris as well, and, and goalkeeping. Um, I think they've they've looked pretty good. They really dismantled Honduras. Obviously, uh, a man down for most of that match was the Hondurans, but 3-0 there. 5-2 uh, against Switzerland. Um, they, they were up 5-0 and then had two goals that they allowed, so that was kind of interesting. And then um, I believe it was 0-0 against Ecuador, but they already had the, the job done. But France then uh, took a while for them to figure out how to... Uh, Break down Nigeria, but they're able to do it when uh, two nil. Obviously, the last one was kind of, it was an own goal. I mean, you could kind of say that they wouldn't really necessarily count. So I mean, at least one nil. But the way is the France really figures out a way to win. Um, Germany, I I still feel like we have yet to see their best uh, soccer being played. Both the I mean, this team just uh, really dismantled Portugal in that first match. Um, obviously, Pepe was sent off with the red card, uh, but then Ghana. I, I mean, a two-two draw. Didn't look that the impressive, Germany. Even against the United States, it took them a while before they were able to break down um, the Americans. But the fact of the matter is, they only won one nil in a game that a lot of people, you know, for how 
much more possession they had, um, and really how the Americans really never felt like it was in there in that game. Germany just a one nil victory. Um, they had some tough time with Algeria as well, as uh, it went to extra time. Um, Schuler got an early goal, which kind of set the mood up, and then obviously Schuler and, and Ozo able to get the pass back. Ozo got a rebound and scored, but then Niger- or Algeria, I should say, came right back and scored one to kind of put pressure on the final second. So, um, you know, I, I, I think this is going to be very interesting. Uh, Germany has a great attack. I feel like France has a pretty good attack. Um, both back lines, I feel, have not really been tested. Uh, I feel like Germany's back line is kind of interesting due to the fact they're playing four center backs. Um, Lom's not back in there, which is really, uh, I think if Lom, uh, really, I feel like uh, Lowe just does not play some of these players to their to their best potential and where they feel the most comfortable. I feel like Lom is probably the best uh, best left back in the world. Left or right back, as you can play either one. But yeah, he's in the midfield. I, I just don't understand that. Um, I think it's going to be interesting because uh, some of the, some of the guys in the back line aren't that mobile. Um, not to say they're not mobile, but they're not as fast to keep up with with um, some of the faster guys for France. I think this is going to be very interesting because Germany is going to be trying to use wave of attack, and and the the French are probably going to try and do the same. Neither defense, in my opinion, has really been tested. Um, obviously. A 2-2 draw um, with Ghana for Germany. They they were kind of tested there just because Ghana has a lot of speed. Um, I think we can maybe see a, lot, a decent amount of speed coming from France, and obviously with Benzema there, uh, always very dangerous. Benzema having a really good tournament. So I think that this is going to be a very interesting matchup between both these teams, and uh, it seems to be that both teams find a way to win. So one of them is not going to be able to win it. Um, so I'm interested to see how this one plays out. Like I said, the winner of this one is going to get the winner of Brazil and Colombia. Taking a look at the other side of the bracket, uh, we have a, a team that really, uh, you know, kind of a name stay now because they were in the final for the 2010 World Cup. We got the Dutch, the Netherlands, um, playing their way into the quarterfinals here. They got the unlikely team, the uh, team that won the group, uh, I believe it was Group D, Against England, Italy, and Uruguay, it's Costa Rica. Still in the tournament, still representing CONCACAF. Uh, the Ticos, they are taking on the Dutch team um, that disposed of another team from CONCACAF in Mexico. Um, but really, I'm interested to see this one. Um, I was kind of, so not. I don't want to say I was surprised. Um, if any, I feel like of any of the other teams that was in the round of 16, the one team that uh, Costa Rica could probably be would be Greece just because Greece is kind of the similar situation where they haven't been there. Um, well, that's when you talked in the other show, Matt and I said uh, we felt like Greece had that had that type of those players that could maybe get the job done. It obviously went to a penalty shootout. Um, the the fact in that game though, Costa Rica had the the one nil lead through um, Ryan Ruiz, and then obviously the the red card meant that Greece was a man up. They were able to get one in stoppage time, send the extra time, but. For that 30 minutes of extra time, Greece was a man up and could not score against Costa Rica. Um, they just did a fantastic job, really defending the ball. I think Greece also hurt themselves because it seemed uh, anytime they would have like a four on two or four on three in a situation, uh, the one guy just seemed to do it all. I feel like if he just made one or two passes, was a little bit patient, Greece could have actually probably scored um, a couple goals in that extra time. But the fact of the matter is they they just didn't really run it well. And Costa Rica, all five players from the spot, putting it home. Um, including uh, uh, Gonzalez, who plays for the Columbus Crew, so I was excited about that. Um, but Costa Rica still in the tournament, uh, uh, really showing no fear going to the going into penalties, and like I said, all five of them making it. So I think this is a team playing with a lot of confidence right now. Um, the Netherlands, I'm not sure about their confidence. I, I mean, they got the job done against Mexico, but they trailed uh, throughout the half. Mexico, for decent portions of that match, was in control. Um, but for the Mexicans, it really kind of came down to a point that Towards the end, they started to just get in that mindset where we just had to defend. Um, and then there's the ricochet ball came out. Wesley Snyder with a world-class finish, as you expect from, from him, uh, to tie it up 1-1. And obviously the late penalty, which resulted in, in Hanselard uh, putting it away. Uh, I mean, the debatable call, in my opinion. I hate when situations like that arise and, and the dying second kind of ruins a game uh, for me just in the fact that uh, someone could possibly, you know, you play a hard game for 90 minutes, and then something like that that comes down to the side of the game. Um, Robin, obviously, being on the end of it, as Marquez brought him down in the box. I, 
you know, I, I, I feel like Robin was looking for the foul. He knew where he was at. He knew that we, or Marquez was coming in and uh, looked for that contact purposely as he just stood there and then tried to, to run as soon as Marquez came in. Um, he did admit to flopping earlier in the game. Um, there was one right before halftime where he did get he got hit um, by two Mexicans as they were trying to, he kind of had a mini breakaway, but that one looking back, that could have possibly been called uh, a penalty, but it wasn't. But I, like I said, he made it to flopping, saying he shouldn't do it. But this is kind of, I've seen this is sort of a consistent thing with him. And it's its really kind of interesting that he says, you know, I need to be better than that. But then here he is, he, he's looking for a way to get found in the box. And, and in my opinion, I was i felt like this one was stolen from Mexico. Um, maybe not necessarily stolen because it was 1-1. Snyder's finish was brilliant. Um, but... It's 1-1, one, one, and a, a kind of a, a, a cheap foul there in the end really sealed Mexico's fate when I would have rather have seen that go into extra time, see what would happen there, maybe penalties. Um, I would have loved to see uh, Ochoa in a, in a penalty shootout, see how he would have done because he has been having a great tournament as well. Um, but uh, the Dutch, though, really kind of had a tough one to get out there against Mexico. I'm interested to see... Um, how this one plays out between the Netherlands and Costa Rica, just due to Costa Rica being this is a, a big time moment for them. The Dutch, though, they were here in the last World Cup, um, and I believe it was this point when they disposed of Brazil. So, a very interesting matchup uh, between a team that is making another big run and a team that's uh, really quite new to this uh, to portion here. And then the final matchup, uh, the winner of the Netherlands and Costa Rica getting to this, uh, they'll play the winner of this matchup here, uh, Argentina. And Belgium, Argentina, it took all the way to the 118th minute um, to get rid of uh, the pesky Swiss as they really defended fairly well. And it was actually a mistake. Um, uh, one of the Swiss defenders, uh, Lankesteiner, he, he lost the ball in midfield. And it was just a quick attack going, um, passing it through Messi. Messi finding the right pass to Di Marie who put it home. And uh, Argentina able to score. Obviously, uh, Djakovic, I think is his name, uh, for Switzerland. Man, how unlucky. He gets the header, hits it off the post, and it comes right back to him, but his footing's not quite right as he just landed and hits off his shin and goes out of bounds. Um, really just a shame because I would have loved to see that one going to penalties too just because it was really a, a, a really good game where both teams were fighting hard. Um, it's another one of those things too where just just like Brazil, Argentina, just, they, you know, if Messi had not done the stuff he'd done in the group stage. Now, I understand it's, it's messy, so you expect him to do this kind of stuff, but um, Argentina just hasn't really quite impressed me. Uh, uh, most of these teams really haven't um, impressed me all that much, which is um, kind of interesting because there's a lot of teams I thought would really dominate in this tournament, and just no one. No one has really looked to me to be that flawless, invisible team that you, you look and see and, and think that they they can easily you know should have an easy way to win the world cup but i think that's kind of what adds to why this is such a great world cup and because you have a lot of surprise stories um but argentina taking on belgium belgium who knocked out the united states um in the round of 16 game it took him into extra time um before uh de Bruyne was able to score and then lukaku followed but then the americans gave him a little bit of run with 19 year old julian green scoring um which really kind of put a new twist on the end of that game as the americans had um, a little bit more possession trying to score, and they almost had it on a really nice free kick uh, where Dempsey got in. Uh, it just Courtois, being a world-class uh, young keeper, came out. You know, he was ready for it at the last moment and was able to knock it away. But Belgium, I think, um, it's just they had a lot of shots. Tim Howard came up big for the United States and, and uh, blocking, I think, 16 shots. Um, just a fantastic game for him. Unfortunately, Belgium was able to find a way to get at least two uh, to move on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more. Matt and I will talk a little bit more about the USA, kind of recap their tournament um, in, in a segment to come. But uh, Belgium in this in the round, or the quarterfinals taking on Argentina. And this, this is a little bit more, um, I feel like Belgium finally kind of came to light once Lukaku came in. I think that's going to be key for them here against Argentina because uh, Lukaku, he, you know, some have said he's, he's kind of like the next the next drug, but holds the ball up well, very up to, uh, well, very well up top. Also finds the right pass when he's on, um, and then it's just a powerful shot and can really put it in the back of the net, and he creates havoc for defenses. Um, he did very well for Everton uh, when he was there on loan from Chelsea uh, this last season. Um, so, 
Very interesting matchup. Uh, I, I think if he is finally able to go, because he had a very quiet tournament, hasn't really done much, finally kind of, he got subbed on right at the beginning of extra time against the U.S. and really uh, set up uh, De Bruyne by taking a shot. Howard deflected it back out. De Bruyne picked up the, the loose ball and, and was able to kind of get a, a little bit of an outlook to score the first, and then Lukaku scored the second. I think a Lukaku is now back and, and he's on his game. I think it's going to spell havoc for Argentina because uh, I don't that back line in the moments they have been tested, as we saw with Nigeria, they just did not do well at all. So if uh, if Belgium, I mean, I think this is a team with a lot of young talent, look poised to make a good run here in this tournament. I think that they could very well surprise some people um, by possibly knocking out Messi and Argentina. Um, obviously, Messi trying to get. Get his as close close as going to get to for a while for him to possibly try and win a World Cup. So he, he's going to want to try and, and do it as well. So I think that's going to be a very good uh, matchup down there. So the quarterfinals: Brazil versus Colombia, a great matchup between two South American sides. Uh, Germany versus France, uh, two of the good-looking European sides coming into this, squaring off there. And then the other side of the bracket, the Netherlands versus the surprise Costa Rica. Uh, they'll take on the winner of Argentina and Belgium. That's a look at your quarterfinals here with the one-timers.